So I decided to do the free code camp challenges again because while I was learning about beautiful soup and uh, Selenium, I found out that there is a lot of another library called Scrapey that seems to be a lot better than beautiful soup. And but then I was as I was learning that uh, some part I discovered that I needed to install play playwright, which is another just similar to Selenium, and the reason why is because I have to scrape that this website that has JavaScript, and the only way to access that is using that playwright and the and another uh, thing there that they say you have to install, which I think is Twisted React Reactor, something like that. And when I was trying to make that work, I discovered that you can't really use that on Windows <clears throat> unless. Uh, Maybe you can, some people were offering solutions, but then I decided that it would be better. It would be a great time to install the virtual machine again and starting start working with Linux, because I think eventually I'll have to do that anyway. And it's, everybody says that's a lot, of, a lot better for programming and servers use Linux as well. So now then I spent a bunch of time Trying to figure that out, and I finally managed to make it work with Ubuntu. And now I'm only gonna start uh, studying about Scrapey and how to do the website. So if I get it going there before I finish all this free code camp stuff, then I'm gonna go back to doing that. But if I don't, then I'm just gonna go do free code camp and coding challenges until I learn the the. Scrapey with Playwright and maybe Selenium as well. So I start from the React here, we'll do two hours, and if I feel like it, then I'll do one more hour. Also, remember that there are some stuff I've, I've kind of forgot about APIs, and I think it's going to be better too. And I'm also thinking about just doing the challenges strictly on Free Code Camp using Raplet instead of doing it on my own. Because I think it's better, it's gonna be better to separate my projects uh, once I start them. Should do it on my own and then I do the free code camp stuff, separate it. So React is open source, view library created and maintained by Facebook. It's a way to render the user interface. React uses a syntax extension of JavaScript called JSX that allows you to write HTML directly within JavaScript. This has several benefits. It lets you use the full programmatic power of JavaScript within HTML, helps to keep your, keep your code readable. Let me, ask, let me see what they want first. The current code uses JSX to assign the div element to the constant JSX. I'll place the div with h1. So. Yeah, this first challenge is uh, usually easier. And then, hello, uh, JSX. So, no need to spend time reading there. An h1, a p, and an and an unordered list that contains three Li elements. I think that's how it says. That's how I'm supposed to say Li. You can include any text you want within each element. Okay, define a new constant JSX that renders a div which contains. So if Emmet is allowed here. I think I can do. Uh, I think it's like this times three. That no, doesn't work. I think on VS Code this produces three Li elements, but I'm not sure. It's been a long time since I don't do anything uh, with JavaScript and HTML and CSS, which contains. The following and uh, see order an h1 a p so i'm not sure if they are on the same 
or it's, it's supposed to be one instead of the, of the other. So, unordered list that contains three the items. I don't remember really well, but I think it's either UL or OL for unordered. If I remember correctly. So, I guess we'll see. So let's see if it works with OL, oh, just make sure. Okay, so it is UL. Next one. The code editor has a JSX element similar to what you created in the last challenge. Add a comment somewhere within the provided div element. Without modifying the existing H1 or P elements. So, what they're saying in their comments is like this. Oops. There we go. Hi. There we go. The code editor has a simple JSX component is direct React DOM render. So this is the part that I don't remember really well. But I think it's just typing this. But now I don't remember exactly if I have to put uh, curly braces here inside. Compass defined JSX elements directly in as the first argument in, in use. Document get an element by the H, select the DOM, not render them. True. There's a div a D challenge node available for you to use. Make sure you don't change the JSX ones. Simple method to render React nodes. Element looks like React DOM render, component to render, target. Oh, I think I'm slightly uh, remembering this. So I think components to render is going to be JSX. Then target node is going to be documents dot. I wonder if I can do a query selector. And then I have to put, I think it's hashtag for ID. Challenge node. So this apparently works there. I think query selector is the newest version of document get element by ID. You do the same thing. class my div to the div provided in the JSX code. Black class of my div. So I assume like here my div. Div should have a class of my div. So let me read this. No user, okay, so it's class name stuff. Because classes are for JavaScript, I guess, for HTML. Difference is hello class to define HTML class. This is because class uh, reserved words in JavaScript. Instead, JSX uses class name. In fact, the naming convention for all HTML attributes, event references in JSX became become camo case on click becomes instead of on click yeah so okay six hours in the code let's see so here i guess i'm not sure oh here no. okay next one the code editor has a function called my component. Do this function so it returns a single div element which contains some string of text. So return, just like in the example there. If 
returns a single div element which contains some string of types. So I think it has it contains something. I'm not sure if I can do this. The text is considered a child of the div element, so you will not be able to choose a self-closing type. Yeah. So maybe I need to. Oh, it's a return here. Now it works. Yeah. The React DOM part is the most confusing for me because I remember there are, there are other things. Yeah, I think this is React component. And I always confuse them. The other way to define a React component is with the ES6 class syntax. For example, Kitten extends the React component. This creates an AS6, ES6 class kitten which extends the React component class. So the kitten class now has access to many useful React features, such as local state and lifecycle hooks. Don't worry if you aren't familiar with these terms yet. They will be covered in greater, greater detail in the later challenges. Kitten has a constructor uh, defined within it. We define within it that calls super. It uses super to call the constructor of the parent class. In this case, react.component. The constructor is a special method used during the initialization, initialization of objects that are created with the class keyword. It is best practice to call a component's constructor with super and pass props to both. This makes sure the component is initialized properly. For now, no, there is a standard. So we use constructor as props. My component is defined in the code editor using class syntax. Finish writing the render method so it returns a div. I think I should return the Contains an H1. It's the tax hello React. In the code editor, there is a simple functional component called the child component. So I need to probably need to render this here. Let's compose the prank. Compose the shoot together by rendering the shell component. So now look how we can compose multiple React components together. Imagine you're building building an app. I've created the three components. So I think it's just a child component. Maybe. So nothing is showing up there, so it's probably off. I think I need to wrap around this app here. So it doesn't work. Maybe it, yeah, it can't be overall because of the instructions here. Could create a class which renders each of these three children to render a component as a child and react component. Include the component na name written as custom HTML tag in the JSX. Oh, so maybe no. So, what do I need to change here? Oh, it's already rendering, rendering here. So, it's probably a pass. I didn't see it because it's smaller there. There are two functional components defined in the code editor called types of fruits and fruits. Take the types of fruit component and compose it or nest it within the fruits component. Then take the fruits component and nest it within types of fruit. 
So is the types of fruits. So this and composes and composes here. Which means I probably should do this. Just going off intuition here. Oh, I didn't need to make controls controls you now. So the same logic as this the the one before, but it's trying to show that you can nest elements. Code editor, the types of food components already rendering a component called vegetables. Uh, okay, so oh, it's probably behind the scene. Types of food components already rendering a component called vegetables. Also, there is the fruits components in, from the sh last challenge. Nest two components inside of fruits. First, no citrus. So it's probably going to be the same thing. And citrus. Next, nest fruits in here. Both the fruits and vegetable components are defined for you behind the scenes, render both components as children of the types of food. So I think it's the same thing as before. So I have to type like this. But maybe not because it's not showing up here. This one scroll. This one scroll. Oh, so I have to render here, I guess. Render both components as children of the types of food component. Then render types of food to the DOM. There's a div with a div. So I think it was React DOM dot render. Then the element that I want to render, just these types of food. And the div. Uh, now I don't remember how to write it. I don't remember if it's like this or not. Maybe it's div dot curious selector. And then here. Oh, this is not defined. So it's probably not this. Curious selector is not defined. So I forgot which word comes before this. If I do, there's also something issue. Maybe it's document dot curious selector. Work. That's element by ID. It's probably not gonna work because it's not showing up here. I just did this also. I already forgot. I'm gonna force myself a little bit, see if I can remember instead of looking up. Oh, maybe. Uh, 
I forgot the thing as well. To wrap it inside this. And now I need to figure out. Uh, how is this written? Yeah, documents, that's curious selector. Oh, now it works. Huh. So I guess it's on the challenge, maybe. Yeah, document. And it doesn't have the alternative. So maybe it's just from the challenge. When there's component to the dome, find a class, class my component stands, react something, react component. And now I don't remember what to do. I guess it's like this. But I don't remember if it's like this. Then it's constructor. Props. And then super, I don't remember if it's inside of the constructor, but I think it is. Because it makes sense. Oh, maybe it's outside. I can't remember now if in, if in Python is inside or outside. I think it's inside, but I think the super is inside of the constructor. But I'm not pretty sure. The newer function. Maybe it's like this. And it doesn't work. So here. Now I'm not sure if I'm making a mistake here or here. I probably have to go back and see. Find a class my component that extends React component. It's render method should return a div that contains an h1 tag with the tags my first React component. Use, it, use this tag to exactly the case and punctuation matter. Make sure to call the constructor for your component true. And there's component to the DOM using react.random render. So the other part is gonna be easier. It's gonna be maybe. this part I have to remember. 
Maybe if I type stuff here, that warning will go away. I think I have to put render here and then so this doesn't work. So maybe this sets should be oh, but if it's outside here it doesn't make sense. I think I'll have to go back and see. Because I forgot. I know it should return a div. Yeah, this part I always have trouble with because there's so many parentheses and curly braces here. I forget the order, order that they are supposed to be. So maybe it's render like this and then curly braces there. Okay, now it went away. So I guess this part is correct now. Just gonna return a div that contains an h1 tag. So my course, yeah. Now I have to think why, what exactly I'm doing wrong here. Super expression must be there, must either be no or a function. So if I take this off, it doesn't work. I think the only way that makes sense for me is like this. Super supposed to inherit from this this class here. If I take the argument, but then it doesn't make sense. Much faster. Other way, can it be? Maybe if I do it like this, but I think I try this. Yeah. No more function. Oh, so it is like this. Oh, so it's up there. My mistake. So I shouldn't put this thing here. There we go. Nice. Yeah, so I need to... I think that's the, the third time that I do this course and I still forget. I need to remember better the order there. That is confusing. There are calen calendar and current date components in the code editor. Calend calendar current date. Render and current date from the calendar component pass in the property of date assigned to the current date from JavaScript date object. 
rendering current date. So here. From the calendar component. Here. Passing the property of date. Okay. So in each pass, so I think it's just like the example there. It's props dot date or maybe it's date maybe it's the other way wrong dates dot props I'm not sure or maybe just props Oh, I have to change here as well. So here is probably props. That doesn't make sense. Then there are current dates from the calendar component. That's in a property of date. Assigned to the current dates from JavaScript date object. I think uh, I think it's like this. Uh, it doesn't work. Props here. Props dot date maybe. So I'll probably have to read there. Oh, so it's just dates, I guess. Oh, and the date goes outside. But it's weird that not rendering here so it doesn't change anything so I think I'm gonna read the, the text property of date assigned to the current Dates from JavaScript state object. Then access this prop in the current date component. Change value in the B tags. Note that for prop values to be evaluated as JavaScript, they must be enclosed in curly braces. For instance, date equals this. So maybe I have to do this. It doesn't, doesn't work. Oh, so props here. I'm not sure. Doesn't make any difference. Shouldn't this be activated when I type this here? Previous challenges covered a lot about creating and comp composing JSX elements, functional components, and ES ES6 style class components in React. With this foundation, it's time to look at another feature very common in React, props. In React, you can pass props or properties to child components. Say you have an app component which renders a child component called welcome, which is, state which is a stateless functional component. You can pass welcome or user property by, by writing. You <clears throat> use custom HTML attributes created by you, inspired by React, should be passed to the component. In this case, the created property user slash the component welcome. Since welcome is a stateless functional component, it has access to this value like so. So it becomes an argument of welcome.
Oh, so here it has to be inside of this. Yeah, now at least it activates there. So I think I should pass it like this, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Now it works. So we have to put the curly braces there. So JSX understands that this is a variable and not text. But then I'm not really sure if I get, uh, maybe I can write anything there. Because date is supposed to be props here. Also, oh, props is just a special function. If I write props, props, then it doesn't show up. Yeah, but then it's the then it's gonna show up. And if I do this, is, it obviously doesn't show up. So I think what's happening is confusing the way they did this because uh, they wrote props here in the argument. But I think date becomes props here and then props is a special keyword of JSX. If I'm getting this correctly. Because here is just props.user. So user is the variable passed here. Yeah, it has to be this. It's kind of confusing. So I'm going to assume is what I'm thinking there. That the date becomes the argument. And props is the special keyword. As challenge demonstrated how to pass information from a parent component to a child component as props or properties. This challenge looks at how arrays can be passed as props. To pass an array to a JSX element, it must be treated as JavaScript when wrapped in curly braces. The shell component then has access to the array properly, property callers. So callers. Bones, uh, child component equal props. Props dot callers dot join. User join all callers array in items into a comma separated string and produce green, blue, red. There we will learn about other common methods to render arrays of data in React. There are lists and to do components in the code editor. Render each list from the should do component pass in the tasks property assigned to, the, to an array of should do tasks. For example, walk or walk. So I think it's here. Rendering each list from the to do. Also, maybe it's inside of the list. There are list and should do components in the code editor. So it's here and here. When there are each list from the should do component. Passing a tasks property assigned to an array of should do tasks. I think it's like this. Then I should put prompts. Not sure though. But I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do both of them or not. And there's only today here. Maybe I should put. Then access the stacks 
tasks array in the list component showing its value within the p element. So here I should use join and then this. So obviously it didn't work there, but I'm not sure why. This task array in the list component is value to display the props dot tasks array in the p element. So it's tasks, I think. Let's push right here. The daily list uh, should have at least two tasks, and tomorrow should have at least three tasks. So I think it might be inside of the today. this tag but I'm not sure or maybe because there's two tags here so so why is this not working so this oh I changed the name. But if I put join now, it's gonna work. Oh, now it works. Okay. Code editor shows a shopping cart component. Define default props on this component, which specify a prop item with a value of zero. So from the highlighted description there, I think it should be default pops. Shopping cart component now renders a child component items. Car items. This items component has default prop quantity set to integer zero. Or write the default prop by passing in a value of ten for quantity. So I assume it's gonna be uh this. It's probably gonna work. Yeah. The example above prop types dot func part checks that that handle click is a function. Adding is required tells React that handle click is a required property of that component. You see a warning if that prop isn't provided. Also notice that func represents function. <coughs> Among the seven JavaScript primitive types, function and boolean written as bool are the only two that use unusual spelling. In addition to the primitive types, there are other types available. For example, we can check that a prop is a React element. Please refer to the doc documentation for all the options. As of React version 15, prop types is imported independently from React, like this. Define prop, type, prop types for the items component, component to require quantity is a prop and verify that it is of type number. So I need to do the same thing that it did there.
So I think it's shopping cart. Uh, but I'm not sure. Stock types. But this is not a function. So consider a best practice to set prop types when you know the type of prop ahead of time. You define prop types property for a component the same way you defined pro default props. So maybe these items dot prop types. Define a prop types property for a component the same way you defined default props. Doing this, we check that props of a given key are present with a given type. Here's an example to require the type function. So maybe it's float. I don't think I. I don't remember if JavaScript. I I think it only has floats. From what someone said. Uh, I think two days ago. But I don't remember correctly. I don't remember really well. The required tells React that random click is required property for the component. So warning if the prop isn't provided. Also notice that func represents function. Okay. Function boolean. prop type for the items component so maybe here is items to require quantity still doesn't change anything so maybe it's the other way <coughs> that I was doing but Quantity here, no, here. So, <clears throat> so confusing. Require quantity as a prop and verify that it is of type number or well, number. Cannot set properties of undefined. Setting prop types. So I probably should do items, prop types. Yes, probably items, prop types, quantity. Yeah, that makes more sense. So let me try. There we go. 
Render an instance of the welcome component in the parent component app. Instance of welcome. The parent component app. Here give welcome a prop of name and assign it a value of a string. Within this, the child welcome access the name prop within the strong tag. So I don't know why it's crossed here, but it's showed up. So, oh, but it's already written here. So maybe it's props. Dot name. Or maybe it's the other way around. Yeah, give welcome a proper name. In the child welcome access the name prop within the strong tags. Oh, so this is telling me to use this. Time we refer to a class component of the thing itself, use the this keyword to access props within a class component. You replace the code that you use to access it access it with this. For example, Prop called data, you write this props there. So that's probably what's wrong, what was wrong there. I think what this does, it creates a reference. So when it creates this, it's going to point to the props here. So maybe it's props dot name. That doesn't work like this. So I don't see what I'm doing wrong here. In the child welcome access the name prop within the strong tag. Yeah. 
Maybe it's this. It doesn't work. Or maybe I remove the disk. Still doesn't work. No, so so what what exactly I was doing wrong there? Just that I have to write something here. Oh, now I need the props here. No, oh, there we go. It's just confusing instructions there. The code editor has a camp a campsite component that renders a, a camper component as a child. So campers your campsite. Define the camper component and assign it default props of name camper bot. Inside the camper component, render any code that you want, but make sure to have one P element that includes only the name value that is passed in as a prop. And find prop types on the camper. Define the camper components. So now I need to remember. I know what to do this. It was like this. I don't remember really well. How to define things. Maybe it's just like this. And I already forgot the default props stuff as well. I think it's just camper dot default props. Then I think it's like this, but I'm not sure. But here is saying that I made a mistake, so. Let me go back and see. Yeah, but here, oh, so maybe I do need to create a class. But it's still saying I made I made a mistake. Maybe if I type things here, it will go away. Also constructor prompts. That's probably not like this.
Well, maybe it is like this, because it's saying that I have to render stuff. Find the camper component and assign it to the frog prompts. Yeah, probably not butchering this. I don't think it makes a lot of sense for the camper. Dot default here inside of the yeah. So how was it? I just did this, the default props part. If I define it before, it doesn't make much sense. Go have to go back and look. I can't remember. So items dot default prompts. Equals true. It's probably the same thing here. But that should be outside. Then I think it's just like this, but should the return here. It's still giving me a mistake. Yeah. Oh, and here's the finding as a cons. So that's probably what I'm doing wrong there. It should be const or not. Get rid of get rid of this stuff.
now do what do I have to do there? I think camper dot default uh something default props. Oh, now it shows up there. Yeah. It's probably camper dot prop types. Is equal to There we go. Hope this passes. Nice. So I was confused about the class here. I'm supposed to just make the, the cones. But I'm not, I'm not sure if I remember really well, but I think I'm pretty sure that on previous exercises there were, there were two classes and one was rendering the other. You should just go back and think about this. Yeah, and this part is still very confusing for me, even after after doing this twice. I think only when I do a full project with React, I'm gonna start to remember everything. Extends React dot components. So here it is render rendering welcome. So I wonder why it was saying that it was a build building mistake or something like that when I did this. Maybe it was on this portion. Yeah, so the Was here? Yeah, I don't see why. Maybe it was something else that I was missing there, but next one. There is a component, the code editor that is trying to render a name. Property from its state. However, there is no state. So this Parts are va vaguely remember. Initialize components with state in the constructor. Yeah, so <clears throat> it's inside of the constructor. And assign your name to a your name to a property of name. The code editor, my component, is already stateful. Define a, an H1 tag in the components render method, which renders the value of name in the components state. So an H1 here. It renders the value of name from the components state. So I'm not sure if it's going to be. Yeah. 
So let's try prompts. If it doesn't work. This. But it's not rendering, so it's probably wrong. Also not rendering. So maybe is this state not name. There we go. Because we have to access here first and then here. In the my component render method, the final column is called name. Instead, it equal to the name value in the component's state. Because you can write JavaScript directly in the part in this part of the code, you don't have to enclose this reference reference in curly braces. Yeah, that's another confusing part. So I think the only place you can you have to use curly braces is inside of this return here, because that's HTML. And then you're using JSX. And the other parts you use normal JavaScript. I think that's how it works. Call name and because you can write okay. Next in the return statement, render this value in an H1. Each one tag using the variable name. So now it's this dot name. Props dot name. Maybe just name. But the state. So what's the difference here? There's another way to access stating a component in the render method. Before the return statement, you can write JavaScript directly. For example, you could declare functions, access data from state or props, perform computations on this data, and so on. Then you can assign a data to variables, which you can, you have access to in the return statement. And each one tag should include a reference to name. So I'm not sure. The render method before the return statement. You can write. JavaScript directly. So here. For example, could declare functions access data from state or props. Perform computations on this data and so on. Then you can assign any data to variables. Which you have access to in the return state. Yeah, but this is not gonna be correct because it's not showing up there. So maybe it's prompts about name, but I think I tried that and it doesn't show up. You there. I think I understand what the the explanation, but it's just not working.
So they're saying I don't need early braces here. But here I definitely do need them. Otherwise it's just gonna print text. But in the component state. So const call name equals name. Or maybe here is a problem. Because I have to make it like this. There we go. Now I think it's correct. I think maybe it's not. But yeah, there we go. There's a button element in the code editor which has an on click handler. This. This handler is triggered when the button receives a click event in the browser and runs the handle click method defined on my component. So this state is dot handle click here instead of the constructor. And this binds the handle click to the this, I guess. I don't remember really well, but I do remember that this is really confusing. The both the this keyword and the bind. I think it binds whatever uh, calls this last. It binds the this keyword, whatever call calls it. Maybe I should read this one because, you know. It's triggered when the button receives a click event in the browser. It runs the handle click method defined on my component. In the handle click method, update the component state using this set state. Set the name property in state to go the string react book rocks. Now I don't know if I should do it inside of here. So it's probably not the right way. Yeah, it has to be instead of curly braces. Given the example here. And then you click and changes. But I'm gonna read this. I think it's gonna pass. I'm gonna read this because I remember this being very very confusing. The previous challenge covered component state and how to initialize state in the constructor. There's also a way to change the component state. React provides a method for updating component state called set state. Call the set state method within your component. It is this set state, passing an object key value. So are they gonna talk about this bind stuff? I think it comes up on the next ones. In addition to setting up the state, you can also define methods for a component class. Class method typically needs to use the this keyword so you can access properties on this the class, such as state and props, inside the scope of the method. There are a few ways to allow your class method to access this. One common way is to explicitly bind this in the constructor so that this becomes bound to the class methods the component is initialized. You may have noticed that the last challenge used this dot handle click because this handle click dot bind this for its handle click method in the constructor. Then when you call a function like this dot set state within your class method, this refers to the class and will not be undefined. So yeah, this is what it is what it's doing what I was thinking that it does that it binds to the class and it stops uh, I'm not sure if stops referencing is the right way to think about it 
I think it's just just binds to the class. Yeah, it makes it a property of the class, I guess. And if you don't put it, then it's not gonna make a property of the class. But I'm not sure. Function like this, I say this refers to the class and will not be undefined. Note that this keyword is one of the most confusing aspects of JavaScript, but it plays an important role in React. Although its behavior here is totally normal, these lessons aren't the place for an in-depth review of this, so please refer to other lessons if the above is confusing. The code editor has a component with a state that keeps track of the text. This set state. Uh, this state here. It also has a method which allows you to set the text to you click. Just here. So I guess I should put on click here equals handle click. So this probably has to be set query braces. So maybe I should do it just like this. And then I should bind there probably. So, uh, I think it's like it's written there, the description of the exercise. Bind this. But it's not working. So maybe. Also has a method which allows it to set the text through your click. However, the method does not work because it's using the disk keyword that isn't defined. Fix it by explicitly binding this should the handle click method the components constructor. So maybe if I do it. Yeah, but this doesn't work as well. Apparently. So this has to be this part here. Add a click handler to the button element in the render method. It should trigger the handle click method when the button receives a click event. Render the method you pass to the on click handler in this curly basis because it should be interpreted directly as JavaScript. So, what exactly is wrong here? So if I take this off, it shows up. So it has to be here, the problem. Oh, maybe it's this dot handle click. Oops. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Forgot that you need to pass with this. My component has a visibility property which is initialized for false. And their method returns one view if the value of visibility is true. And a different view it is if it is false. 
Currently, there is no way of the updating the visibility property in the components state. The value should toggle back and forth between true and false. Just click the under there on the button which triggers a class method called toggle visibility. So render this state visibility turn. So I should have a toggle visibility here. So I should bind first. Close this, bind this. And then I should put this dot sat state. Also it doesn't work here. I'm doing something wrong. It puts only sad state, doesn't make sense. Yeah, this doesn't work. It has to be this here. Pass uh, a function set state to define these methods. So that the state of visibility toggles to the opposite value when the method is called. So you should pass a function here. But what am I exactly am I doing wrong in this set state? That should be equal, maybe. No. I remember there's curly braces in the parentheses there, in the set state. But I don't understand what's the problem here with this. Should I also have a function here? So the function is obvious. If visibility false, then I change to true, and then if it's true, change to false. So maybe the this doesn't go there. Just set state function. Yeah, but it's still not working here. So maybe I'm doing something wrong with this function. Function equal. But I think the way that I should do this, the rest at least, is like this. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, I should put a name. Rabbit. That doesn't work. Hmm. 
Let's function the name. Can I comment this? I should put so I'm not sure if the issue is on the set state or with this thing. To me, it makes more sense to put the this there, but so what's wrong with this? Oh, maybe I need to put state here, but yeah, this dot state is probably. So let's see the example. Yeah, it does have this this state there. Oh, so here I'm not binding. That's the problem. So I should declare here to this set state thing, and then the bottom I create the function. According to what they are, they are right, right in there. So now it's gonna be. Yeah, but I'm still getting a mistake. It's probably because. I didn't write anything here. Sometimes you might need to know the previous state when updating this state. However, state updates may be asynchronous. This means React may batch multiple set state calls into a single update. This means you can't rely on the previous value of this dot, dot state or this dot props when calculating the next value. So you should not use code like this. Okay. So. No, I'm not sure if this part is correct or not. Instead, you should pass set state a function that allows you to access state and props using a function with set state guarantees that guarantees you are working with the most current values of state and props. This means that the above should be rewritten as this. And also use Note that you have to wrap the parenthesis. So maybe this portion is correct and this one is not. Set state. Yeah, but it's still showing up there. I think I only need this state here. Yeah. Oh, 
I'm not sure if this makes sense as well to bind the toggle visibility. I think it does because the class needs to remember. Yeah, but I'm not sure. I think the other part is like this. Then you make it the other way. And maybe it should be just state visibility. I don't understand this. So I think I'm gonna look at the hint here. Also the bind is correct. This dot toggle visibility bind this. So Oh, it has to be toggle visibility. Oh, does it have to be? I think it can be any function. Oh no, maybe it has to be toggle visibility. So that was the problem there. It has to be toggle visibility because of this thing here. Now maybe it does work. So now I have to understand. I forgot if there is this. Yeah. So if I do like this, it works. Yeah, apparently now, yeah, there we go, nice. It was just confusing there because I thought I have I had to put the function inside of the this of the set state. Uh, let's see. And I also do need this thing here, I guess. Yeah, pass a function to set state to define this method so that the state of visibility, so that's that's the part that doesn't make sense. Because the way they're, they're telling me, they're writing this, seems like you're supposed to pass the function to set state. And not the set state to the function. And I'm not really sure, so maybe I don't understand really well how the set state works. Or is supposed to work. So here now I think I get it. When you click the button, it activates the toggle visibility that is pressed as props here. Oh, well, maybe it's not passed as props, it's just passed here. Because it's all on the same component. Yeah, so it doesn't pass as props. It just Binds this to the class, the state of the toggle visibility, and then activates this function, which is the toggle visibility. And this function changes this the state of the visibility according to this. So I guess it does make sense, because if you put the state first, 
then yeah it doesn't make sense to activate the the lack of visibility inside of the state yeah but i think this could be worded a little bit different differently but maybe if i spend more time there i will probably uh, eventually get it the counter component keeps track of count value in state there are two buttons which call methods increment and decrement. So the counter component, this one. So this increment is decrement. A component keeps track of account value in state. There are two buttons which call methods increment and decrement write these methods so the counter value is incremented or decremented by one when the appropriate button is clicked also create a reset method so when the reset button is clicked the count is set to zero so i think i remember doing this so this dot increment yes set state So I have to put a function here, so I'm gonna pass count and then count plus equals one. Maybe it's well. So maybe we should put this as a different name. So it's not conflicting there, but oh, so here, yeah, here's probably binding first, and then here is the declar declaration. I think so. This dot increments because this dot increment dot bind this. Okay, so now everything disappeared there. Yeah. Maybe that's not correct, but... So this is not working. This includes initializing state, writing methods that set state, and assigning click handlers to trigger these methods. the components there are two buttons which increment yeah make sure don't mod modify the class name of buttons also remember to add the necessary bindings for the newly, newly created methods in the constructor so why is this disappearing here so if it's incrementing then this dot state or maybe it's just count right But then, so maybe it's... I think eventually it's going to be something like this. 
but I'm missing something here. Oh, now it works. Huh. So now it's set to zero here. That's weird that, oh, it's probably because I'm binding and then the function doesn't exist. That's probably why it's not showing up there. So probably these methods are, are off. So let me try to just count here. It's difficult for me to understand what exactly I'm passing here. So this increment goes, when you click, goes here. And then binds this to the class. Which activates this function here. But then, what does the argument has to do? I think colon of state, maybe. Or maybe it's the other way around. And the issue is that I don't understand what the call part is. If I put count, it's going to be confusing. Just put C. So what if I put state dot C? It's setting the state, so maybe just C there. I'll try this one next. I think I tried this on the first one. So maybe it should be C plus C plus one. Yeah, but then this makes sense. In my mind C should be count because I'm setting this state. But I'm not sure if that's correct. I think I'll be right back.
I think this is the last one I will do. I have 10 minutes more. I'm already tired. Yeah, so I'm not sure. I think I'm going to look at the solution. <clears throat> I know I have to somehow I just don't understand what this C is here. To make just like this is not going to work. It doesn't even activate here. Maybe it's this, not C, but it doesn't make sense. State doesn't make sense. If it's C dot state, I think also it's not going to work. Now it's just a matter of understanding what this is. I can also test there by clicking. It doesn't work. What if I just do count state account and ignore the C? If I remember from the other one, it was I think it was it was something in the props, but I think it was state and props. So C is probably state. So C the account probably. Yeah, now it should work, yeah, I guess. Well, let's test. No, it's not, not working. I think C is the state, man. Maybe if I do count. This, let's see. The count also wants to count. Yeah, no, definitely doesn't work. There was a way to if I put console dot log C. Ah there we go. So C is count is the count object. So what if I make like this? Yeah, but then it doesn't make sense. Count zero. Uh, let me console out see that count. Zero. It's probably see that count. Plus one. And it's still zero. Oh, it's equals. Yeah, now it's increasing, but. It's not changing there, which is weird. So why doesn't this work? 
Well, maybe because I have to put this there. Probably I'm not. So what's wrong with this? Don't get it. It is clearly incrementing here. Put this not undefined. If I put C, it was this. Doesn't. Doesn't work. Oh, maybe I need to pass here something. Maybe I need to pass this state or this. So is this playing this state of count? When I click it, it changes here and doesn't change there. If I put C, it's not going to work. Object, object. Doesn't make sense. So what's wrong with this? Oh, now it's not changing. Oh, maybe it is changing. I'm just not console logging. Should be working fine and don't get it. What am I missing here? Or oh, maybe this I should be inside. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be the case.
because I'm passing in the function so the only thing I can think about is passing something here but so let me console log state to see what it is <clears throat> it's probably not that So I think if the timer is up, I think I'm gonna look at the solution. Because it seems to be working here, but it's not changing this one. Only maybe if I put oh, maybe if I print state is gonna show state account. Oh, it is going up. Yeah, I'm just gonna look. I don't get it. Probably missing something, but... Oh, it has to be... It can't be equal. It has to be like this. But it's saying count here. So it's count equals C dot count plus one. Weird. Well, I'm making it equal. That's the problem. But now it's not changing anything. What is going on here? Oh, maybe is this that I'm doing? Yeah, but it doesn't doesn't matter. The reset I could put the same way they did it there. Just count zero here. Oh, and this uh, should also change. Now there's a problem here. This. Yeah, but now it's not. Oh, I'm. Am I blind? What is happening here? State, state. Oh, I think I forgot the parentheses. Here. That's the problem. <laughs> God damn. Now it should work. Let's see. There we go. Finally. So maybe the the way that I was doing before works as well. Just forgot the the parentheses. Yeah, now it's working. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I think I'm done for today. I'll probably come back tomorrow, I'll keep doing this. Uh, or if not tomorrow, then some other day. See ya.